What's up, guys? Back again for another week of Hit the Books here into week six of the NFL here. Crazy. We're flying through the season already. Got some wild card playoff baseball going on. Well, I guess it's divisional round now. Um, Mackey's Mets on the TV as we're recording. No Huff and Jesse tonight as they are in Pittsburgh going to the home opener for the Pittsburgh Penguins as we have the NHL season upon us now. And we have the NBA just around the corner. So just Mackey and I to take us through you with you some of the games for this week in the NFL football slate. What we're looking at, how last week went. And a little bit of update around the other leagues as well. But, uh, Mackie, how are you doing? Yeah, not too bad. Obviously, uh, baseball is in full swing. with the uh, They're in the NLDS right now, a- ALDS. Uh, good series going on. Padres look good. Got the uh, got the Dodgers on the brink. No, not a lot of people saw that coming. Um, obviously, the Mets are looking good. That's why I'm wearing my hat right now. <laughs> um, could, uh, could, clinch, could clinch that uh, NLDS tonight, actually. So, I'm um, looking forward to that. But other than that, looking forward to the NHL getting started, NFL. <laughs> Um, in full swing and just uh, yeah, just another week. Yeah, like we said, getting ready to dive into some NFL here. But first, just want to call out: we do have our NFL Sunday live streams that have been popping. Follow us on any of the uh, social apps there. You'll see our posts on Instagram. That's where we get a lot of interaction, some good graphics. But if you go onto our TikTok, you can catch the live. The Rumble, you can catch the live, and on YouTube, you can catch the live as well. So tune in there with your fantasy questions, betting questions, day of. We, we love it. we got another London game here this week, so we'll be recording during that as well. But let's dive into last week a little bit. Started off with a bang with that falcons Bucks game that went to overtime. Kirko chains in Atlanta. He was swag surfing through for 500-plus and four touchdowns. Kind of screwed me over with that Bucks money line play, but uh, that was a great game nonetheless. I mean, you, prime and, time's and you, been great. And you love a good Thursday night football game, too. Obviously, that division in the past hasn't been very good, but this year, you got three teams rolling up there. So, um, obviously, that was, a, that was a good way to uh, kick off Week 5. Yeah, and while we speak of Tampa, shout out to those being affected by Hurricane Milton. I know that's striking today. Hope everybody's listening. Is uh, okay down there. We definitely hope for the best and hope that uh, we can get back to normalcy down there kind of soon afterwards. But we'll see how that goes. A couple other big games on the slate. Uh, not so big of a game, but my team's game, the Patriots. Lost a close one. Um, I know a lot of people, Mackie included, live the Dolphins down the stretch. But we got Drake May coming next week, so that's all I'm looking forward to. But the first London game was pretty good. I don't know how much of that you caught. But um, Justin Jefferson and co. grabbing the win against the Jets, who have sputtered quickly. I mean, yeah, Jets are kind of hitting. You know, I, I heard Aaron Rodgers get on a you, – you, you know how he does a lot of talking now. He said a lot of people are going to overreact after week one. They got the week one loss, come back with two wins, and have an easy game – Easy week, week four. Yeah, week four against uh, the Broncos. And obviously that ended up turning into a loss, 10-9 loss at home. I, mm-hmm. it, it was a it was a monsoon, I think, if, I, if I'm not wrong. But um, lost two straight now, sitting at two and three. Not looking too good for that division. They obviously just just uh, fired Saleh as well. So, um, yeah, those Jets kind of in shambles again. Yeah, I know. And they're, they're hiring, I believe it's Aldrich, Aldrich, the defensive coordinator, the head coach there. Um, not is he interim or is he just? Is he I think he's interim. He just moved into that role. He's got to yeah. be interim because he wasn't talked about much before. Um, I know that Nathaniel Hackett was about to be fired by Robert Sala before he got fired. So kind of some craziness going on there. And uh, did you see they're kind of urging Hassan Reddick to come back on the field because they really need him at this so point. You, you have to, yeah. I would say that division is kind of wide open too. A lot of people high on the Bills lost to two good teams. Like they lost the Texans here this week. They almost had that crazy comeback. You had the Texans on the card. Good hit though. I thought they were going to take care of business. Without Mixon, once again, when the hell is he going to get back on the field? I hope it's this week. But the Bills now dropped two in a row to the Ravens and the Texans, so we'll have to see how they fare against some of the AFC elite. Um, the Commanders look great once again uh, in, a, in a demolishing of the Cleveland Browns who need to bench Deshaun Watson. But Jaden <laughs> Daniels looking like he could win that NFC East, looking like he could win the Rookie of the Year, even push for the MVP. That team's fun to watch. And then um, the Jaguars grabbed the win as well. I don't know if you saw that. That was a pretty enticing game. Uh, Joe Flacco with that bomb to Alec Pierce late to make it close, but the Jaguars hold on and get their first pick. Yeah, Any Jaguars, thoughts on those teams there? Jaguars avoided uh disaster there. They're up 10 with like four minutes left. Probably should have closed that one out as it was, but um, they grabbed their first win. I think it's Trevor Lawrence's first win in like 11 starts. I think he ended the season on seven right to last me. year. So uh, maybe he can get back on back on track here. They've, they've had some close games this year, just not being able to figure it out. Um, that team's not not terrible in my opinion, so... You know, maybe they could string, string along a few wins here and uh, make a push for that AFC South. Yeah, I'm interested to see how Trevor Lawrence would do with a valid O-line. He's been getting crushed there in his time in Jacksonville. I know it's a tough excuse because not many people are dealing with great O-lines. But I, I just, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not throwing the whole book out on him yet, but I still got to see a lot more from him. 
Well, like I said, yeah. Jin Daniels, CJ Stroud still rolling. Caleb Williams uh, rolling as expected against the Panthers. The rookies really got going. The Broncos grabbed another one too. Bo Nix, Jaden Daniels, Caleb Williams, all on winning streaks of their own. Um, interesting teams there. I don't, I don't know. Who do you believe in the most out of those three rookie quarterbacks? Uh, I'd have to say Jaden Daniels because I feel like he's carrying most of the load for that Washington team. You look at the Bears, that defense is playing really good. They're getting some close, tight wins. Caleb Williams is looking really He looked really good last week. He's kind of finding his own, but he's not playing at the level of Jaden Daniels just yet. And Bo Nix, that defense over there in Denver has been absolutely Carrying. incredible. Turnover free um, football, though. For Bo Nix. Turnover free football. Yeah, seems. no, he's, he's, he's playing not, with football. I'm not, I'm not hating on Bo Nix, but um, he, you know, he's he's not doing what Jaden Daniels is doing. So I'll say Jaden Daniels. He's got to be the heavy front runner for for rookie of the year as well. But um, I think uh, he definitely is, has a uh, surprised me at least. He surprised most of us, I think. Yeah, the ship has maybe sailed on the time to place that wager on Jaden Daniels to win rookie of the year. But one I'm still eyeing is the Commanders to win the NFC East, even though they have two other powerhouses near them. And the yeah, Giants yeah, team is only valid. Um, I don't have them up in front of me. We'll see if see if you can grab those while I get into some of these next games here. Um, but that end of that four o'clock slate got pretty crazy. Some seven point underdogs. We Ted on the live stream taking wins outright on the road. The Giants go into Seattle and beat a good Seahawks team. I don't think they're very good. I don't think you do either. Yeah, the team that's been playing well to date. A good record for that Seahawks team. It's a tough place to play. They were without Malik Neighbors, without Devin Singletary, and they still won the game outright. Uh, 29-20 score with that pick six or block six, fumble six, whatever it was to end it. Um, fun game to watch there. I mean, Tyrone Tracy stepping up. Wandale Robinson stepping up. Daniel Jones playing good football. Here's, here's a see. No eye-popping numbers, but he definitely looks like he has a starting spot in this league the way he's been playing of late. And now maybe they get neighbors back in the mix and they can shake things up there in the NFC East. The four teams pushing for the vision. But like I said, the other seven-point underdog winning outright was Kyler Murray, those Arizona Cardinals. I don't know what's crazier. I've been on the Cardinals all year. I said they're going to be pesky. And they've been giving teams runs for their money. And now they're winning one in San Francisco. But that 49ers team, I think they might have to sound some alarms there and see what's going on. Because CMC isn't back anytime soon and they're dropping games left. Yeah, I was just going to ask you, do you think that game says more about the Cardinals or more about the 49ers? 49ers are up 10 at half. I don't think they scored the point in the second half. Yeah, I, I'm still going to say it says more about the Cardinals just because I think that team is going to push for a wild card spot. I think this is the Kyler Murray revenge tour. I know everybody's going to say, wait until Call of Duty drops, yada, yada. I saw some good ads from him playing that off, which is great to see in his mind too. But in reality, I think this Cardinals team is one to be reckoned with. They have Trey McBride, who's back healthy, Marvin Harrison Jr., and Michael Wilson. They have James Conner who gets in the end zone. Um, I think Kyler Murray's got a lot more potential than most of the quarterbacks in these leagues, actually. So I, I think they're going to be pesky. But yeah, Aaron, that Niners team, I saw someone saying Shanahan on the hot seat. I don't think so. Do you think so? Come on. Come yeah, on. No no yeah. way. Not, not Definitely not yet, at least. I mean, that team's also still very banged up. You're missing your your rock there with Christian McCaffrey. I'm not sure when he's going to be back, but um, they, got, they, they definitely have some uh, – some uh, some moves they have to be making. But going back to the Cardinals, I'm not very high on the Cardinals. I do kind of like Kyler Murray. He's growing on me a little more. He has a few weapons. He has Trey McGrath, obviously Marvin Harrison. Like you said, James Conner finds the end zone almost every single week. The defense still scares me, though, and the offensive line still has no, nothing to rave about either. So no matter how good Kyler plays, he could still you know, he could score 30 points a game and still end up losing the game. But um, I'm just not very high on the Cardinals. Yeah, and then, like you said, that Cardinals team around them. But they're slowly building. I think it's a good transition from what they were in the past. And Kyler Murray's a big play waiting to happen. You see him throw up that one on that touchdown run before he, he was even by some of the defenders 50 yards out. He can make up for that lack of a pocket, and that's what a lot of these teams are looking for now with these young athletic quarterbacks. But those Niners, yeah, like you said, banged up. McCaffrey on the schneid. I know they might get Ricky Purcell back here at some point. He's been starting to practice. George Kittle's been in and out of the lineup, dealing with injuries but playing through him. Debo, same thing. Ayuk actually showed up on the scene last week, which was good to see. But if you watch that game, the Niners just kept begging to give that away. Turnover after yeah. turnover, especially yeah. in the red zone. Jordan Mason kind of fumbling the game late. So, interesting to see. And then the last two here, we got the Packers. They, they ended up winning that game against the Rams. That game got kind of scary at the end. I know we both hit on that. But uh, I think the Packers are a good football team. Winning on the road is never an easy thing to do in the NFL, and they covered. So, the Cowboys, though, that game started so late. Our two Yinzer friends who aren't here today were at that one, and they waited around just to see the – the home team lose another one there. We both <laughs> predicted it with the Cowboys, the Cowboys on the money line. We called it. Why are they plus 130 against the Steelers who can barely score points? I know it was in Heinz Field, but what do you think about that game? I, I only watched the first half. I you know got late. I had to go to sleep. Got to wake up in the morning. Wow, but, um, your own team. I had to, man. I had to be up early. 
But, uh, they, I mean, they looked all right the first half. Dak just needs to re- relax in the turnovers. A few really bad plays, bad com- miscommunications. But at the end of the day, he comes up clutch. I didn't realize they scored with, like, what was it, 10 seconds 15 left? 15 seconds left to yeah, Jalen um, Tolbert. Yeah. I was excited left. to see Jalen Tolbert get involved. I think I said this to you when Brandon Cooks went down. I'm a big Jalen Tolbert proponent. I thought about drafting him in fantasy leagues at the beginning of the year. I ended up putting him. Re-added him now, so wasted some moves, but still got him. I think he's actually a pretty athletic guy. And then Turpin as well. Getting guys like that, the ball in their hands more. Besides CeeDee Lamb and Jake Ferguson, who are the rocks for Dak Prescott. I don't trust those running backs. I don't trust anybody else. Give them looks. They're big plays waiting to happen. And it's good to be, see that they have other options besides the 88 and I believe Ferguson 87. Yeah, you got that right. But um, no, Michael Parson list too, right? Like Michael won. Parson list. No, On the road. Michael Marcus Lawrence, our other pass rusher. I forget his name. Um, was it Odigazawa? No, it wasn't his name. He was he was a backup. He came in, but he, he I think he like tore his ACL. He's out four to six weeks. He needs surgery, so we have no pass rush right now. Obviously, um, he's getting it. through though. I kind of like him. I kind of like him on that D line. Yeah, I don't hate it. I mean, I'm not going to say I'm happiest about that win because I don't think the Steelers are very great. But but you that's know, Steelers you go football. Into Akron, you, you go into Akershire Sunday night. Um, obviously, all the weather conditions and everything, and you get a win. You can't really complain about that one. That came up clutch when it really mattered. And they were underdogs going to that one, but you got to think in a low scoring game like that or a one possession game, the Steelers at home find a way to win. Dak dealing with with turnovers and stuff, but I, I don't care as long as you get the job done against the Steelers. The Steelers are going to harass your offense no matter what. If you can put up twenty points on the road against them, that's a good day. Yeah. And then on Monday Night Football, I can't. Believe, I sent you that that prop list. I was going through my props left and right. Yeah. A lot of them ended up hitting. Had a good night, but. Um, it's always the Chiefs, Mackie. Come on. Derek Carr over you know, Patrick when you Mahomes. Said that, you said against Pat Mahomes, I was like, yeah, I really hope this doesn't come out, come back and bite me in the ass. But um, Mahomes hasn't looked Mahomes-esque up to, the, hasn't up, had to, to. That, up to that point. But, I mean, dude, last or Monday night he looked incredible. And um, I was definitely just sitting there. I wasn't even really that angry. I was just kind of sitting there like, should have known. I, I should not have unloaded Three on this one. On the should seats. not have unloaded on this one. But, you know, you take your losses as it is, and you try to bounce back. You'll see, see how this week goes. Yeah, and Mahomes thrown for 300-plus with a depleted cast. His passing prop that game was 230. And with Kareem Hunt stepping in, looking like rookie Kareem Hunt, running for wild, scoring that first touchdown of the game, I hit on that. Great to see him there. They have another week off to get things right in that offense even more, right? Juju steps back into the role, goes over 100. I mean, these are guys that I think would only be successful in Kansas City, and they are. And then what else always happens is that Chiefs defense that Steve Spagnuolo puts together, led by Chris Jones, they hold teams to few points. They're tough to play against. That's why Mahomes hasn't had to look great this year because that defense is so good, like they were in that Super Bowl run last year to go back-to-back. And Kelsey's starting to come to life too. So bye week coming up for them. I think they're going to come out firing on all cylinders. Saints, mm, I think they might be – on the outside looking in now. Three straight, um, three straight yeah. tough losses. Them and the Bucks, two, or two them, and, start. them and the Bucks dropping games left and right, but uh, that division will be tight throughout. But we got a full slate here for uh, week six here. A few teams on the bye, but we'll start off with that Thursday night football game. It's a good one, I think. It's the 49ers and the Seahawks, two teams that are, uh, the Niners looking to get back to 500 here. They're sitting at two and three, and the Seahawks sitting at three and two with the 12th man here in Seattle. The Niners are two and a half point favorites, and the over-under is sitting at 49 and a half. The Seahawks coming in at plus 155 on the money line. I bet you some people are looking at that because of the Niners of late. I'm leaning on the Niners to get the job done here. What about you? I mean, I do kind of like the Niners as well, but they've had a tough time against this division this, this year. Obviously, seven-point favorites against the Cardinals. You lose it outright. Six-point favorites against the Rams. You lose it outright. And they've had control of both those games late into the game. So, you know, they're finding ways to lose games right now instead of finding ways to win them. Um, the Seahawks team, they, they can put up points. I know this is a tough defense. Divisional matchups. Thursday night it's in Seattle I'm not I'm not I'm definitely not going to be taking the Niners on this one I do kind of lean on Seattle plus the three and a half at least um but this is going to be a good game I, I think the these division these divisional games no matter who everyone's playing they're going to be tight and uh could be a shootout you never know yeah the, that's what we say we always think it's going to be but these two tough defenses too in the same division here playing it close to the vest I think um, DK Metcalf's been having a good year. The breakout of JSN is pretty evident. And then that running back room of Charbonne and uh, Kenneth Walker looks really good too. Not too sold on Geno Smith, but he's getting a lot done with his legs, which is helping move the chains too. Um, but coming off of a home loss to the Giants here, I just think the Niners are more able to right the ship. Um, they know what it takes. I think both teams will be sitting at 3-3 three and three after this week, and a lot of people will be wondering what's going on. And the Niners take off of that division, especially when McCaffrey steps back in. 
and their first round pick receiver who got shot. But we'll we'll see. This is going to be an important one in this division. I think Shanahan beat with Hawks be on the hot seat though. He's got to put together a good yeah. game plan. He's, he's still, he's look good too. He's I one think. of the best coaches in the league, if not the best. So I mean, he's got to kind of put his foot down at some point and just take over and just get this team back on track. I'll tell you what, give Kyle Juszczyk the ball a bit more and he won't be turning it over. That guy you can do anything with, Swiss Army knife. But Brock Purdy's looked good this year. Remember, I got that Brock Purdy to lead the league in passing yards. Ticket How's that city. looking right now? I think he's like uh, top three, right? Yeah, I think he is. Him and Dak were the two I was looking at before the season started. I went with him. But, Dak's uh, top three too. Yeah, Dak, Dak's a good one. Going into our next game, we got the Texans and the Patriots. Let me shout out this out real quick, though. Um, I had that Nico Collins plus 900 to lead the league in receiving. He's leading by over Terrible. 100 yards going into last week. Gets Terrible a nice beat. long touchdown to start it, and then he goes on the IR. So, tough one there. I would have liked to have seen that cash, but the Texans are going into New England to play my uh, New England Patriots here. They're favored by seven points as Drake May is fa- making his debut sitting at plus 280 on the money line. I'm seeing 260 on the money line. And the total sitting at 38 and a half. Seems pretty low for uh, two quarterbacks we're expecting to be. Again. Sorry. Seven points for the Texans here. 38 and a half on the total. What are your thoughts on this? See, I'm scared because I don't know what to expect out of Drake May, but um, I, I do kind of know a line here. I think the Texans are they're playing really tight games this year. They're finding ways to win games. I think they're sitting at four and one, but they don't have any blowout wins, I don't think. Um, you can see the Patriots hang around. You know, that defense has been playing pretty well. Texans just kind of make a lot of mistakes every single game. You no, know, Nico Collins obviously is huge. You still have Tank Dell, you still have Stefan Diggs. Um, but I, I don't know. I think the Patriots can definitely hang around in this one. Maybe even you, you've seen these heavy underdogs win outright. You can't mm. you can't really take anyone. Uh, no one's really safe this year. They've already they they won a seven point underdogs in that week one against the Bengals. Mm-hmm. Texans team kind of reminds me a lot of this Bengals team. They're just kind of on the other side. They're winning instead of losing those tight battles. Um, I'm gonna lean on the Patriots plus a seven here, but way too many uncertainties with Drake May starting at quarterback. I'm not gonna be betting on this one. Yeah, I think I, the only thing I like here is the over 38 and a half. But like you said, those heavy underdogs have been hitting this year. If you just take every end underdog in the week, you'd be up a lot of money this year. A lot of money. Um, but 38 and a half is the total here. I think two strong quarterbacks. I think they're able to get it done. One thing that'll be tough to monitor for the Patriots, Jabil Peppers. I know he was like arrested the other day, so hopefully he's back in the game. But he's been <laughs> one of our best players on defense. Um, but we'll have to see there. Patriots got Ramondre Stevenson and Gibson at the two-headed snake. Maybe Drake May can get those young receivers going, too. Kendrick Bourne made his debut for the Patriots last week. Um, J- Jalen Polk's been looking pretty good. Tyquan Thornton, I know he's on the trade block. Maybe he'll get him more involved. Hunter Henry, one of the top tight ends on the year. I'm excited to see what they can do here. Um, but it's going to be tough to stop that CJ Stroud offense, especially if Mixon's healthy. I think Mixon will have a big game if he's able to play. If he's out, it gives the Patriots a better chance here because I'm not too worried about Akers. And then their secondary is their strong point here. Um, excited to see Gonzalez the matchup with Diggs, and there's no Nico Collins to worry about, so we're going to have to see Tank Dell. We have a good matchup there with Jonathan and Marcus Jones as well. Um, I think it could be a lot better game than people think. I don't know if I'm going to bet anything on it. Maybe personally off the card, I'll throw a little bit on the Patriots here just because it's Drake May's debut. But like I said, I think there's a lot a lot more points than 38 and a half here this week. I think both teams are going to put up a few touchdowns at least, so that's my favorite play. Pretty low line for uh, two a team, a game that could even be a blowout too. Yeah, I think the, I, th- I just think the uncertainty is with uh, Drake May. They kind of they don't expect that Patriots offense to get going, but yeah, no I, line. I like the over as well. Yeah, it's so, it's so low though. That's the only reason. Imagine you tease that over with something else. You're getting it, it, like you can get it down to thirty if it's a thirty six. Thirty points. Crazy. Come on, that'd be nuts. But um, let's move into our next one here. Uh, we should have started with this one actually. My Patriots popping up on my feed here first because you know. They're the Patriots and they're favorite on all my list. They're, they're at the top. <laughs> yeah. They're at the top yeah. of the list. Huh? Yeah, but going into our London game, we do have a 9 30 London game here. That Patriots game taking place at one o'clock. Um, but the London game this week is Caleb Williams taking on Trevor Lawrence. Those Jaguars are always in London, so nothing new to them. But Caleb Williams, the rookie, they've been rolling right now, and this looks like a great spot on paper. But I am leaning on the Jaguars to get the job done. I think it's gonna be a tough spot for a young team to go overseas and get it done. Two and a half points is the spread for the Bears. The Jaguars coming in at plus 110 on the money line would like a little bit more juice, and the total sitting at 44 and a half. Give me your thoughts on this one taking place in England. I'm going to go with the Bears in this one, just because I know Jaguars are familiar with, with London over there, but um, I think I think this Bears team is finding themselves around a two-game winning streak. Caleb Williams is actually slinging the football now, and he's making really good plays downfield. Um, and the NFL wants the rookie, the number one overall pick, to go over to London and get the win. I know they do. 
that you're going to see the Bears defense show out. You're going to see some struggles from Trevor Lawrence. Um, I'm going to go with the Bears in a tight battle, probably a low-scoring one. Two and a half, I think it could fall in between that two and a half. What's the money line sitting at? Probably minus 135, minus 140. Yeah, I got plus two, 110 for the for the Jags and minus 130 for the Bears here. I think it's worth the juice there. I, I do. I think the Bears will win this one. I think it's going to be really tight and a low-scoring game, but I'm going to go I'm going to go with the uh I'm going to go with the Bears here. The only thing that makes me so weary that I might not touch this game, I didn't end up touching that Vikings game last week. I want to take the Vikings and a Jets touchdown. I don't think he ended up getting in the um but this Bears Jaguars game like uh, a rookie quarterback going overseas. If this was in the states, I like the jet, the Bears here, hundred percent. But it's just so uncharted territory. He didn't start too hot in his rookie season in his first game, so I, I don't know if he's going to be able to start hot over there. It's going to be a fun one to watch, though. They got their pieces on offense healthy around them. I actually like the defense the Bears have put together too. Jaquan Brisker is one of my rising stars that I've been a fan of. Tyreek Stevenson, someone as well. They have some other bigger names on that defense as well, but those two have caught my eye when I've watched them. Um, but this Jags team. Tank Bigsby looks good on the ground, so maybe you mix him in more a bit with ETN. You get a little thunder and lightning. Um, Brian Thomas Jr., how good is he? Is he one of the top young receivers in the league? He's a dog, and he finds the end zone a good amount, too. Yeah, Trevor looks his way a good bit. and He, he likes him. He likes him a lot of people were surprised, too, because they brought in Gabe Davis. They have Christian Kirk. Evan Ingram's been in and out of the lineup. I think that's a big piece. If they can get him back this week overseas, I would like to see him against this Bears defense, too. He's healthy. Maybe that'll make me lean on these Jags and end up putting them on the card. I think they can get the job done. Look for Brian Thomas to continue his strong stretch of play. It's going to be a good game over there in London, though. Yeah, back to our 1 o'clock slate here. Here's a fire matchup for you. Two of the most exciting quarterbacks to watch in the league right now. The Baltimore Ravens and the Washington Commanders face off in Baltimore at M&T Bank Stadium. The Ravens are the heavy spread here. Six and a half points. And the total sitting at 51 and a half. The Commanders coming in at plus 230 on the money line. They're at 4-1 and one on the season. Can Jaden Daniels keep the good times rolling? The Ravens just played maybe the game of the year already against the Bengals last week. I can't believe we glazed over that one. My bad on that. But that <laughs> Ravens game was insane. Lamar Jackson looked like an MVP the way he was playing late to get his team back in it. Going for his third straight potentially, like Derrick Henry said. They fed the big man in OT after some crazy uh, fumble and extra point misses. Zay Flowers showed up. All three tight ends were involved for the Ravens. They're firing on all cylinders. Do you have a different narrative on this Ravens team right now? I mean, you know my narrative on this Ravens team. I don't like to really bet against them anymore since they've killed me the last two years. I do kind of underrate them every single game, but um, they kind of proved me wrong. So I, I, I don't know. When you think I, of the Henry yeah. Lamar combo, it's looked great. Yeah, I mean, when you put Derrick Henry in that backfield, I mean, it's it's going to work out, especially if he if he's going to continue playing the way he's played all se- or his whole career. But um, uh, this is a tough one. This is going to really show Big a lot. Spread. It's going to it's going to say a lot about Jaden Daniels. And I mean, Huff said this last week that they were probably the most bet team in the, of, of the week last week. They were minus three going or at home, I think, against the Browns. Mm-hmm. And Jaden Daniels absolutely lit it up. They're heavy underdogs here. A lot of money coming in again on them. This is a really tough defense, though. It's a completely different scenario than last week mm-hmm. against the Browns. I think if he can really show out this game, it's just Jaden. It's just one of those those uh those rookie campaigns where you just can't really. Get, you can't really get a can't really beat. So I'm gonna go with the Commanders plus the six and a half here. I think it's gonna be a close game down to the wire. You're gonna see both offenses put up points. I mean, mm-hmm. the Commanders don't have a great defense. Obviously, on the other side of the football, the Ravens have a pretty good defense. They, they should be better than that. There's just yeah, de- definitely. I know they got lit up last week. Um, there's just not a lot of film on Jaden Daniels yet, and the way he's playing, it's just defenses can't really figure him out. He's putting up the points, and he's doing what he needs to do. So I'm gonna go with the close game here. Probably a little more high scoring, but I'm gonna go with the with the uh, Commanders plus six and a half. Yeah, and and like you said, I think this might be the biggest test for Jaden Daniels to date. He's played Tampa Bay. He's played the Giants, the Bengals, and the Cardinals, and now the Browns. He hasn't played a true playoff team yet. I know the Bucks and Bengals like to think they are, but this is what's this going to be more telling for, the Ravens or the Commanders, or is this just going to be a battle of two good teams? I don't think this is going to be a, a proven game for anybody. I just think it's going to be a great matchup. I think it's going to say a lot about this Commanders team. Like you said, they haven't really If they played. win? No, just regardless of how this of how the outcome comes out. I mean, if they could play this game tight, the Ravens are definitely one of the top five teams in the league, even sitting at three and two. Um, it's going to say a lot about if they're actually contenders up there or they're just kind of beating the shit out of the, out of the, the lower pack of the doing, doing their job. league. Yeah. Um, I, think, I think they're up there. I think that this team is kind of built for it. I think they have the weapons on offense. Brian Ro- 
Brian Robinson. Yeah, Brian Robinson Jr. Brian Robinson, two touchdowns last week. He's finding the end zone. Jeremy McNichols um, touchdowns in back to back games too. Playing good, obviously, and Terry McLaurin on the other um, on the on the outside too is playing great. So um I think if they can keep it going and you know, defenses don't really have an answer for them. I think it's gonna say a lot about if they can uh make this a close game about how good this team really is. Um but if they you know, if they get blown out in this game, I'm not gonna jump the gun on anything. Yeah, and, and a couple other points here. So I think that Derrick Henry will have his way with this commander's defense. So that's going to be tough to see. I do like how Cliff Kingsbury has gotten Terry McLaurin involved. I'm glad you said his name because he was kind of quiet to start the year. And he's one of the most humble receivers in the league. I don't know if you heard any of his quotes. I heard it when they were in the, I believe it was in the prime time or when I was watching their game the other day. Um, I heard I heard the announcer saying, he's like, everybody's saying all these divas at wide receiver. Now, Brandon, I want my money, want my targets, yada, yada. He said he doesn't care. He hasn't played with a good quarterback there. He wants to win football games. He expects there to be growing pains with, with Jaden Daniels, and now everything's falling right into place. So that team's been fun to watch. But the defense has been a little tear here, holding the Browns to 13, the Cardinals to, thir- to 14. But the Ravens present a much tougher task here. Um, they gave up 33 when they played the Bengals in Cincinnati. The fact that this is at M&T Bank Stadium, too, gives me a lot more confidence. The 6.5 number makes me not want to touch it, but I do think the Ravens get the job done. Um like you said, though, those big underdogs have been giving people trouble. Let me throw this to you, though. Even if the Commanders drop this game or get blown out, I think they're fine. Because listen to their upcoming stretch after this. The Panthers in what? At home against the Panthers, home against the Bears. Then they play the Giants and the Steelers before they play the Eagles and the Cowboys. So I think that's four in a row they could rattle off even if they drop this one here. I think they have a great chance of winning this division, too. Especially on a pretty down year. Cowboys don't look the same. Eagles definitely don't look the same. Um, this and this and They look the strongest in the division. So, you know... Being a Cowboys fan, we used to always look at the commanders on the schedule and just be like, all right, chalk up two wins. And that's how it's been the past three, four years. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, this is definitely not not a game to look over anymore. And they could definitely make a run for this playoff, especially with that schedule coming up. Sitting at 4-1 and one already, you can be 7-2 and two before you even play the Cowboys or the Eagles. Yeah, what about those Ravens now? Let's give them a little bit of gas getting, uh, getting to the top of that AFC North now. Um, it seems like they have the game of the week every week almost. They're always in a great matchup. Um I know that even that Cowboys game where they beat you guys, they they, they got good late. Um, the Chiefs game, the Raiders game, every single one they've been in this year has been super close. So this could, has potential for game of the week. I could see Lamar and Jaden Daniels getting after it, and potentially the winner of this can grab an MVP. I know Lamar already has two, but he's a regular season hero, so he could go for a third as well, and Jaden the front runner right now. Yeah. Um, I mean, realistically, the Ravens could easily be 5-0 and right now. Obviously, that shitty loss to the, to the Raiders week two. They mm-hmm. never should have lost that game. And they were about a half, of, a half of a toe away from beating the, those Chiefs as well. So um, they could be 5-0. and They're sitting at 3-2. and they're, they, they're not upset about where they are right now, especially how the season started. But, um, I mean, there's no reason to give these Ravens their flowers. Everyone knows that they're a top team in the league, in my opinion. Yeah, agreed. Keeping it moving here, we got another uh, AFC North team in the 1 o'clock slate as they – Cleveland Browns go into Philadelphia, take on the Eagles. The Browns coming at almost double-digit underdogs. Nine and a half points favorites are the Eagles in this one at home at the link. The total sitting at 42 and a half. And Cleveland coming in at 360 on the money line. My eyesight deceived me there. I thought I saw 380. But 360 on the money line there. Nine and a half point spread. Probably the biggest underdog of the week. Um, can Deshaun Watson get it done? Is Deshaun Watson a real quarterback? Nick Chubb's not playing yet. Mark Cooper, I, I don't know. That Browns team just looks sluggish. The defense isn't carrying like they should be. Um, Eagles coming off the bye, too. This is a good I, spot for them. I really think you're going to call me crazy. You're just going to call me a Cowboys fan. I really think it's a great buy low spot for this Cleveland, Cleveland Browns team. I thought team. so, too. I, I honestly thought so, but I you want to know what gives me no hope almost, though? The fact that the Eagles are at home, one, but coming off of the bye. Yeah, but they, you know, they have their struggles as well. You know, if, if momentum's not going, it's just not going. They're not going to figure it out to say at a bye week and they had time to put game plan for this game. They can game. get healthy, though. They can get healthy. Is Lane Johnson playing? Uh, Not sure about Lane Johnson. I was more concerned on the wide receivers here. Uh, Let me see. I, yeah, but I mean. No, you definitely need him. No, you definitely need him, too. I mean, he's a probably a bigger piece, but I was saying I've been looking into the receivers personally. Let me see. A.J. Brown. He's he's fully active. That's a good one to see. Devontae Smith. Fully practiced Wednesday, too, so they're going to get the both of them back. And uh, let's big. get a quick update on Lane Johnson here. It's big. Well, they needed at... both of them. Lane Johnson, yeah. Hey, give your take on this game. Yeah, I just think uh, it's a great by-low spot. I know with these with these heavy underdogs, a lot of them have been winning outright. 
I'm going to say it's worth a sprinkle on the plus nine and a half. What are they sitting at money line? Probably plus, plus 360. Yeah, 350, 360. But no, Lane oh. Johnson, A.J. Brown, and Devontae Smith practiced in full. Okay, so that's 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 big news. But um, I'm not... I just think that there's a lot of problems going on with that team. Nick Sirianni's had made some terrible decisions this year. Um, Jalen Hurts doesn't look like Jalen Hurts. He's turned the ball over a lot. Could be a really good buy low spot for this Browns team. I know they're playing like shit. Sean Watson maybe can figure something out this week. I know it's in Philly, not an easy place to play. Not going to give give up complete hope on that team just yet. Um, give me the Browns plus the nine and a half. I don't want to give up hope on the Browns either. And initially looking at it, I thought the same thing. But I'm sold on the, the Eagles here. Coming off of the bye week, massive. I think that getting back their top two receiving threats, massive. Getting back Lane Johnson, massive. That bodes well for Saquon Barkley, who looked like an MVP candidate the first few weeks when they were all on the field, too. Um, I still think the Eagles are a good football team. I still think they're a playoff team, too. Need to get this one at home. I think that Deshaun Watson loses this game, maybe heads to the bench. Maybe this is the time we see Jameis Winston is right here in this one. Uh, Nine and a half point spread, though. I don't know if I'm speaking that. It's kind of crazy to me. Maybe a Deshaun Watson turnover. I mean, did you see that clip of Deshaun Watson walking off the field when his coach wanted to go for on fourth down? There was, there was 12 men on the field. Yeah, but still, uh, yeah, I guess there's that's, been the, the fake news. news. That's they, some fake yeah, news. Yeah, there was 12 men on the field. They couldn't snap the ball. I was going to say, but the, d- that just tells me, like, the mindset. Whenever you talk to a Browns fan, too, the mindset behind Deshaun Watson, he doesn't have the fan base around him. It's hard to imagine he has the locker room Nobody behind has him. Faith. Nobody has faith in him. There's no way any of his There's no way he has faith in himself, though. That's why he's not playing that well either. So I'm not too I'm not too high on this Browns team. I think they there's potential for that to be a blowout matchup there for the Eagles. I could parlay the Eagles with the Ravens here and just take two big underdogs and maybe play that one out. But those underdogs have been cashing all year long. But going along to another one o'clock game, got a few more on the slate here. The Cardinals and the Packers, pretty fire matchup. I'm big on Jordan Love. I'm big on Kyler Murray. Um, taking on in Lambeau Field, the Packers coming in at five point favorites. And the Cardinals almost at plus 200 on the money line at plus 195. The over-under sitting at 47 and a half. I'll start this one off here. I think I like the Cardinals with this value. I thought the Packers could push for this division. Um, I think they still could, but the Vikings really holding their own scare me. And now the Bears are relevant too. Um, I don't know if I'm going to card either of these, but that's just a lot of juice on a Cardinals team that's riding high. Kyler Murray's look good. Maybe I like the over more than anything. I think I always like the over in Cardinals games. But I'd like to see Jacobs and Connor find the end zone. I think Marvin Harrison gets going after a quiet week because the last time he had a quiet week, they fed him. Um, and then the Packers on the other side, Jaden Reed's a, a world beater. I know they were without uh, Dobbs and Watson last week, but Jaden Reed and Josh Jacobs carrying the load big time. Oh, in that fantasy stupid star, if you added him, you found gold. Tyler Kraft, Tyler Croft, Kraft, I believe. He's been Kraft. jumping onto the scene back-to-back touchdowns last week to give them the lead over the Rams, one of them being a long touchdown. Um now that I'm talking it up, I'm starting to lean towards the Packers a little bit more. I'm <laughs> not taking a side. It. Yeah, not taking a side here. I think five is a pretty good number too because they're trying to entice you with that Cardinals money line. But I like a lot of points here. I think this is going to be a fire, fired up matchup for two teams having a nice shootout in Lambeau in the one o'clock slate. But let me hear what you think about the uh, Packers and the Cardinals. I'm going to go with the over as well. I, I think uh, both teams kind of put find ways to put up their points this week. I think the Packers defense get a few more stops. I do like the minus five and a half, five points, whatever you said it was. Um, I do. I, I like the Packers in this in this spot, especially in Lambeau, not an easy place to play. Um, but I'm not going to be betting on that one. I do. I re, I really like the over though. I think both offenses get something going at least. Yeah, I think both these teams can push for the uh, the wild card. Three and two, the Packers are sitting at, and the Cardinals are at two and three. I think a double touchdown parlay with the running backs would be a good thing to look at. Cardinals win this one. They're sitting 500. Of the Packers. I think that'll be massive coming down the stretch because I think later in the year they're both going to be going for the uh, wild card, but. That'll be a fun one to watch. And then we got a slugfest here. I think they've already played each other this year. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. The Bucks and the Saints? No, but Bucks played... Uh, no, they haven't played each uh, other. They played the Falcons. Falcons. That yeah. was their divisional game. But both played the Falcons. These two teams both in dire need of the win, I'd say. The Bucks at 3-2 and two, and the Saints at 2-3. and three. Um, The Saints are home dogs here at plus 155 on the money line. Three and a half point underdogs. Baker and Co. at three and a half point favorites. The over under sitting at forty one and a half. Um, we saw the Bucks play a great football game that they couldn't close out on Thursday night football. Now they get another divisional bout on the road in New Orleans. Um, I think I like this. I like the Bucks here to maul, uh, doing it for the hometown while Hurricane Milton slamming. I think Chris Godwin and Mike Evans continue their dominance. 
they're going to continue to eat through the air. So if you like props and you have them in fantasy, fire those up. Fire up those Godwin Evans props. I hit on the Evans touchdown the other day. That's because they don't have a true running game. They're trying to figure it out themselves. Bucky Irving fumbling the ball. Rashad White banged up and not looking very productive. Pete Otten being decent, but it's really just the Mayfield, Godwin, and Evans show. Meanwhile, I think the Saints are sputtering. I don't like Derek Carr and what he's been doing. I don't think he's very good. I think Shahid's been the lone bright spot for that team. I guess Kamara too, but you always expect that. Give me the Bucks here, minus three and a half. I'm going to buy the half of a point to three, but I think they have a strong game here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be with you on this one. I do like this Bucks team a lot more, especially the Saints team on a three-game losing streak. Hasn't looked the same since those first two blowout wins. Um, Derek Carr came back to life. We've seen that a lot. But I think uh, I think it's going to be a, a pretty good game. I just think you're going to see Baker at the end prevail. I think he's going to find ways to put points on the board. Well, Saints have uh, have uh, drives that are just kind of stif- or stifled, and they can't can't figure it out. Um, at the end of the day, I think Baker's going to prevail, and you know he's been playing really good this year. He's probably a top five quarterback of the, for the season. Mm-hmm. Um, I like this Bucks team. I think they need this one big, go go to four and two in this division, and uh, and I think they'll get it done. Yeah, and one thing that's going to be tough to monitor though is if there's anybody who can get under Mike Evans' skin, it's Marshawn Lattimore. Um, so that could be that could be bringing some fireworks on us. He's having another career year, Mike Evans is. One of the more underrated top-end receivers, in my opinion, because he's always getting the job done. Um, like Johnny Manziel said, if I had one guy to throw a touchdown to, it might be him. They did play, um, they did play his next day and him together. Yeah, no, I know. I, I know. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think it was a little... Oh, no, yeah, but I do love Mike. I do love yeah, Mike. Yeah, I, I, I just saw that today. I was just like, yep, I remember them being sick there at... Texas a and but uh, with the Colts and the Titans are our next game here. Another divisional matchup. Last 1 o'clock matchup of the slate. Probably the boringest game on the slate, especially if Anthony Richardson's a no-go. But I saw a lot of people saying they think he should sit for the rest of the year behind Joe Flacco and learn. Joe Flacco's just productive wherever he steps in. Um, he looked great again last week, although in a losing effort. But he's putting up 34 points a week at that age. Um, good supporting cast here. You have Michael Pittman Jr. You have Al Pierce. Um, some good tight ends, a great running back, a decent defense. Defense a little bit weaker than it should be. But going into Tennessee here, they're at 2-3, and three, and the Titans are at 1-3. The Titans coming off the bye. So I believe Will Levis is still at the helm, not Mesa from Rudolph, as he was able to get healthy there after playing in the prime time and losing. Um, the Colts are underdogs here, though. They're at plus 110, Titans minus 2.5. I love that plus 110 for the Colts here. You might see that on my card. I'm a believer in these Colts. I think they get to 500 and push for a a shady wild card spot that they don't end up getting, but I think they're going to have a close to 500 year and it'll be another win here this week. Total sitting at 43 and a half. What do you think about this one, Mac? The AFC South bout. Yeah, I know it was against a really shitty team in the, in that banged up dolphins team, but you know, I said, I'm not going to bet on Will Levis until he finds out, finds out a way to win a football game, but he won a football game and this team could easily be three and one right now, barring some really stupid mistakes made by, by Will Levis. Um, I think he's kind of figured it out. He's played decent football. I do kind of like this Titans team this week that, as you said they're underdogs or they're favorites? No, the Colts are underdogs. Oh, that's really tough. Um, Joe Flacco plays. I do like the Colts a little bit better. I'm not going to have a, a play on this one, but I do kind of like this Titans team. I think they're playing good football. Um, tight games in and out. Coming off the bye week. Um, divisional matchup. I'm going to go with the Titans here. Yeah, I just don't like what the Titans have around Will Levis. I don't like Will Levis in general. don't really like what they have around them either. Um, Alvin Ridley and D-Hop being the only true pieces. They have a better defense than the Colts. I know they got some young guys on that D-line that are starting to step up. The Colts at plus 110, though. I like Richardson more than Flacco, but I think Flacco is no very way. solid. Come too. on. I, I just like Richardson's Richardson is ceiling. So stupid, dude. I mean, he, put, yeah. he, makes, he makes great plays, and then he'll just turn the ball over. Like I, I, I'm just so intrigued by the ceiling he has, I guess, but the floor is pretty low, too. Joe Flacco, meanwhile, you know exactly what you're going to get, and I think he could beat this team. I think the Colts are a better team all around. I think the Titans are not. I think we could see Will Levis end up getting benched again or injured. For Mason Rudolph, if he continues his poor play. But uh, I don't think that'll be the most exciting game of the 1 o'clock slate. What do you think? Over 43 and a half or under there? You think it's going to go under here. I think there's minimal points in this game. I think both teams have a few turnovers. Um, and maybe even in the red zone, so there's some uh, good good drives that end up with, with zero points. But uh, I think it's a divisional matchup. Two teams that aren't really proven yet. Um, I'm going to go with the under here. Yeah, and kind of similar to the Andy Dalton scenario in Carolina, when Joe Flacco's at home, let's fire up those Indianapolis Colts wide receivers. Michael Pittman Jr. and Alec Pierce getting life breathed into him. This he doesn't really have a true rapport with anyone, so he's just going to spread the ball who's ever's open and uh, get it to that top dog. But let's get into our 430 slate here. We got how many games we have in the 4 o'clock slate? We have four this week. Four. Starting off with another divisional matchup, the Chargers and the Broncos. Chargers coming off the bye, sitting at 2-2. Two and two. Um, 
up and down first half with their new coach. A lot of new roster, too. Not too much talent around Jay Arbo. A lot of people writing him off as a sub top 10 quarterback now. Meanwhile, the Broncos are riding high. I think they're on a three game heater. Um, Bo Nix turning into one of the rookie stud quarterbacks had that altercation with Sean Payton on the sidelines. A lot of people love seeing him fired up. Javante Williams got going again last week. Um, that defense is just clamps. Pat Sertain, what a dog. They're just keeping everybody out of the end zone. But the Chargers are favored here by a field goal. Three point favorites sitting at plus 100. Meanwhile, the Broncos are at home plus 130. And the over under sitting at 35 and a half. I'll start off that I think that I like the over here. I think that's so low. Maybe you tease that and the Patriots over and you're, you're not asking for many points. Um, but it could be played closer to the vest here. Um, I took the over in the Broncos game last week, despite their defense being lights out, and it did end up hitting. Do you think Bro- Bo Nix can keep the good times rolling? I don't know if I'm going to touch a side in this one. I can't buy in on these Broncos because I truly don't think they're very good. But I don't want to bet against that defense right now. I do love the Broncos in this game. I really do. You know how I feel about this Chargers team as well. But uh, three-game winning streak riding high. That defense has been playing incredible. I think Justin Herbert's going to have a really tough day, especially with that pretty weak O-line in front of him. I think Joe Alt's is he playing? Still, I mean, they're coming off the bye, so I'd assume he's back in the mix. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm just not hiring this Chargers team. I think it's a divisional matchup. You're going into the mile high. Not an easy place to play. This defense has all the confidence in the world right now. Bo Nix on a three-game winning streak. I think he has all the confidence in the world right now as well. Um, gonna be a really, I think it's going to be a low-scoring game. I'm not, I'm not, I don't really love uh, that teaser, in my opinion. But I, obviously not a lot of points, so it, it could <laughs> still hit. But I'm going to go with the Broncos here. I think it's a divisional matchup. And Bo Nix is kind of riding high right now. and finding ways to win football games. Yeah, I think Arbaugh and Peyton, that's a pretty good historic coaching matchup, too. Um, I think that'll actually be a pretty tight game. Won't be my favorite one to watch, but right when we get out of those 1 o'clock games that have been crazy, maybe that Ravens-Commanders game, you'll see this one on your TV kicking off. And I think it'll be close throughout, so can't go wrong with either pick there, but I don't think I'm going to put either on my card. Wouldn't be surprised to see Hoff put that Broncos money line on his card. He's been high on him, called a shot last week, and they easily covered. And speaking of Hoff, him and his Yinzers got the Las Vegas Raiders in Vegas this week. I think this might be a good spot for them to right the ship, but they're three-point favorites going into Vegas. I've seen Vegas beat a much better team in the AFC North already this year. The Steelers sitting at 3-2, and two, the, the Raiders at 2-3. and three. Who are you leaning on here? Raiders getting plus 145 on the juice. Over-under sitting at 36.5. Um, they think Crosby and Watt and Co. will be able to shut down these weak quarterbacks, but what are you thinking? I think that field is going to have a good day. Uh, I don't know. I'm feeling, I'm I'm feeling the Raiders in this one. I really am. I think the pa- or, or the Patriots. I think the Steelers are coming back back to life after a three 0 start. They've lost two straight. Russell Wilson is almost a full participant at practice now. I think Justin Fields feels that breathing down his neck. Could have a, could have a rough day. I know the Raiders defense isn't anything special, obviously. But Max Crosby can get to him a few times. Uh, maybe maybe lose his confidence. Maybe make him fumble the ball once or twice. Uh, Raiders offense finding ways and kind of put up points. I know they put up 16 last week against a really good Broncos, or 18 last week against a really good Broncos defense. No Devonta Adams kind of scares me. I'm not going to have a play in this one, but I do kind of lean on the Raiders. Yeah, it's something I keep going back and forth in my head. I lean on the Raiders too. I don't know why because I honestly don't know how Gardner Minshew is going to put points on the board against the Steelers defense. I honestly don't know how they're going to do that. What are they going to throw to Brock Bowers every play? Maybe that's what they have to do because he's looked like one of the best tight ends in the league. Um, but I think Justin Fields has a good day and a losing effort here. I think he gets George Pickens very involved. I think he gets involved on the feet, too. I think Jalen Warren's out again, so you hate to see that. They don't really use Friar Muth. Boswell's leg's going to be going nuts once again. He hits field goals almost every game. Um, but I, I don't know. I think Justin Fields has a solid fantasy day. I'm streaming him for Patrick Mahomes, who's on the bye this week. But I think the Raiders can find a way to win a low-scoring bout. But every time I say that, low-scoring bout, that's a Steelers dub written all over it. Staying away for sure. Yinzers will probably have this on their card with the spread. Wouldn't be surprised to see the Steelers win here, but they're not a good team. So I can see them all 500. Um, exactly. Much much better game here in the 4 o'clock slate. Potential for best game of the day as well. Should be a projected shootout between the Lions and the Cowboys. Your Cowboys coming in at plus 140. Home underdogs. I love that. And the Lions are minus 3 here. Over under sitting at 52.5. So the Vegas is expecting a shootout just like I am. Jared Goff riding high. Dak Prescott coming off a massive win. The other thing is the Lions are coming off the bye, though, so Dan Campbell's schemed. Gibbs and Montgomery are ready to go. Um, Laporta ready to go. Maybe they get him more involved. Amon Ross looks good. Um, I like the Cowboys here, though. I think they're going to win another game. I think the Cowboys, are, I overrate them maybe in my head, but they keep winning games here. They're sitting at 3-2. and two. I think they have a chance to press for the division still. People call me crazy for that take. But Dak Prescott is a good quarterback, especially in today's landscape. I think he's a better quarterback than Jared Goff, and a lot of people might debate me on that. 
But I, I'm going with the Cowboys at plus 140 here. Give me the ins and outs on this game here. Your team taking on a great opponent. Why? Yeah, I'm gonna go with the Cowboys and the Juice here too. I took him or I took him earlier today, and I think the the line's probably gonna drop a little. You can see it down to maybe two and a half. Um, Cowboys already lost two games at home this season. Rough start, um, but I think they're gonna get back on track here. I know the Lions. Lions are gonna get are gonna get there. So they're gonna put up their points, especially with. Uh, I'm not sure if Michael Parsons is out this week. I know Demarcus Lawrence is out on the other side of the football or on the other side of the line. Um, but I, I I think the Lions are gonna put up their points like they always do. I think, I just think Dak's gonna find a way to. To, to get his as well. I mean, he's finding his way with the top end. Tariqo Dowdle has kind of came into that came into that spot for, as the number one running back. Got twenty touches last week. Um, maybe a, maybe a big CD Lamb game. There's definitely going to be points in this game. I'm going to go with the Cowboys at home though. I think they get the job done. See a big game out of Dak. I, I really do think so. Yeah, and let's see. I got the latest uh, updates on Michael Parsons. He opens the week as it did not practice, did not participate in Wednesday's practice here. He's week to week with a high ankle sprain. Um, see extended playing time. Parsons Aspens after primary backup Marshawn Neeland was placed on injury reserve. That's who you're referring to yeah, earlier in the yeah, cast. Neeland, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like Neeland like injured. Neeland, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> see you, bud. But yeah, they they would like to get Parsons back in the mix with him sitting out practice. I'm gonna. I fear he's gonna miss this game again. Like I said, I like that juice on the money line there. I'm gonna go with the Cowboys as well. I expect for CD Lamb to have another big game. Jake Ferguson to have another big game. Jalen Tilbury have another big game. Those are the three guys I've been riding props on last few weeks on these Cowboys. And I think it's going to continue because they're not running the ball. So, you know, Dak has to get it out. There's going to be a lot of receptions. I'm just high on what the Cowboys have cooking. I think Dak and Cole will be able to get it done. Um, this has potential for a shootout, though. It's got to be a lot of points, right? You got to assume so, especially with the with the weak pass rush the Cowboys have right now with, uh, with the injuries. I think both teams are going to find theirs. Is uh, Jameer Gibbs and David Montgomery finding the end zone this week? I hope both of them don't, but you got to assume at least one of them will. Probably both. They always do. Maybe Laporta gets going. I don't know. That's He's had a tough start to the year. Yeah, Monra, Mon Ra, you guys Ra. have that good secondary. Maybe they can uh, compete with him this week. So we'll have to see. I'm going to be watching this one. That's America's Game of the Week, I believe. Sunday, 425 on Fox. That'll be a great one. Last 4 o'clock game of the slate here. Another divisional matchup. I don't think we need to talk too much about this. The Falcons are five-point underdogs. Uh, no, they were four and a half. They opened up at another six point favorites. The Falcons, six point favorites in Carolina. Um, the Panthers in at plus 220 on the money line, still with Andy Dalton at the helm. The Falcons, uh, Panthers game set to go for over 46 and a half. I don't know about that, but I think Kirk Cousins continues to ride high. I'm going to, I'm going to lock this one in for the Falcons and I'm going to say they cover the spread too. Is there any chance that that juice on the Panthers cashes this week? Uh, no, not in my opinion. I think the Falcons are a really good football team. I think they're finding their ways. Kirk O'Chains, 500-plus yards last week, four touchdowns, come from behind win. Um, I think he's gonna just going to roll this over into this against this weak Panthers team, especially this weak Panthers defense. Um, and on the other side of the ball, Falcons have a great defense as well. I think Andy Dalton's going to have a tough yeah, week as well. Yeah, he's sledding. No matter who they put at quarterback. I know Bryce Young came into that game late and made, made a few nice throws, but um, Falcons, Falcons going to be down there next the entire game. I, I don't think there's a chance the Panthers even keep this one close. I'm going to go with the Falcons by double digits. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think that's going to be a tough day for Andy Dalton and co. He looked like the old the Andy Dalton that we kind of expected last week. So I think that juice might have, the air made it, came out of the balloon already. Maybe, um, maybe no Adam be- Thielen, though. No Xavier Leggett. And they didn't get Deontay Johnson going last week. So I don't know what they're going to do. Chuba Hubbard looked really good, though, if that's a nice bright spot. They have Jonathan Brooks allegedly coming back within a couple weeks too, but I'm not buying in on this team at all. No, no, no. Maybe Bijan can get in the end zone. I think he has one touchdown this no year. No way. That fun. guy's allergic. He's allergic. <laughs> but the, I think that Drake London looks great. Kyle Pitts actually came back to life last game. That was nice to see too. Everybody did because he threw for 500. But Pitts looked pretty good. He started off with a big catch too. London's one of the top receivers in the league. He's very underrated. Um, Mooney. Another top underrated receiver that was once the one in Chicago before they brought in everybody else. Um, playing with a good quarterback now, he looks good. And then the depth, too. Who was that? Hodge with the uh, game-winning touchdown last week. That was pretty crazy to see. But uh, getting into our Sunday night football game, kind of a, a lame match of two teams I'm not too fond of personally. You know I'll be watching it, though. The New York Giants host the Cincinnati Bengals. The Bengals coming in at three-and-a-half-point favorites on the road. Sitting at one and four after losing again last week, the Giants sitting at two and three, plus one forty-five on the money line, over under at forty-seven and a half. Which way do you lean on this one? I don't like the spread on either side. I think the Bengals are finding ways to lose games this week. On the other hand, Giants are playing pretty good football. They've been in some tight, tight games, haven't really had a bad showing besides that week one loss to the Vikings, who 
turned out to be a powerhouse in this league. Um, I'm going to, I lean on the Giants. I think there's great value on them. And you can get them on the juice here. I'm not sure if Malik I'm Andrews not betting on the Giants, though. Oh, no, no. Like I said, I don't like I don't like a side enough here to make a bet on it. Um, what's the over under? You said 47 and a half. I like a Jamar Chase anytime touchdown prop. Yeah, me I think too. he's been going off lately. He's kind of been carrying this team, um, even though they're sitting at one and four. T. Higgins as well. Carrying. He's come to life the last two weeks. Joe Burrow looked really good last week too. He put up five touchdowns. It was yeah, a, it was a real good that. effort. But you losing, can't you know, losing. Like, what I've told you in the off season though. You can't win games. You can't get to the playoffs and win. With just three guys, you can't tie all your money up in a quarterback and two receivers. They have no running game. I know Chase Brown looked decent last week, and Zach Moss looked decent weeks before, but they're not good running backs by any means. They have a weak O line. They have bad secondary receiving within their tight end core, and then they have Yossi Vosh, who's okay. Defense super weak besides Trey Hendrickson. Got to spread that money around. I don't think they're able to get done, but I love your play there with Jamar Chase to find the end zone again. But like I said, T. Higgins popping back off. You can go with their receptions or a touchdown for both of them. Maybe you take all that and it should hit. Joe Burrow looking pretty decent too. Yeah, more way to end that game with that that pick for Burrow to let the Ravens back in. Brutal. But um, yeah, I only like Joe Burrow or I only like uh, Jamar Chase here to get in the end zone. Going to be more of a prop game. I do lean uh, Giants in the juice though. Yeah, if Malik Neighbors is able to come back, would you look at any Neighbors or Wandell props? Without Neighbors, I love a Wandell prop because he gets the ball every play. But uh, Tyrone Tracy looked good filling in for Singletary, Real too. Good, yeah. Um, Daniel Jones looking all right, I guess. He's, he's, saying, he's, he's not been, He's not looking as bad as he did. He still shows his Daniel Jones, but, I mean, he makes you some forget. You there. forget who he, he's even a quarterback in the league, so I guess that means he's doing pretty good because we don't hate on him so bad. Yeah, you're not hearing enough about him, so he can't be doing that bad. I think the Inzers are going to be all over the Bengals in this one. Uh, I I think Huff will be. I th- I I don't know. I think you're gonna see a lot of money on those Bengals as well. Really, people love them and just a big following. Um, that'll be a crazy one though. I, like you said, I think it's gonna be a prop game for me too. Then on Monday Night Football, another divisional matchup, a very very important game. This one's massive for the division. The Bills are at three and two, and the Jets are at two and three. It's in MetLife Stadium, so the Jets are at home. The Bills are two and a half point favorites. The Jets are plus 115 on the money line, and the total is sitting at 40 and a half. I like the Jets on the money line here. I know we trust them. I know they've looked terrible. But Aaron Rodgers shows up in the prime time. It's he such a tough game. Me. I know, but that's a, that's a different type of prime time. That's that's a unique situation. It's a fake game almost at 9.30 a.m. But Monday night football at home in a must-win game to even up the division. Can the Jets get it done? New head coach. A lot, Hoff likes to say this, when teams have a new head coach, the boys usually rally around them. Um, they have a great running attack. I know that Hall hasn't been good this year, but him and Allen is a good duo. Garrett Wilson's good. Mike Williams, Allen Lazard, Ty Conklin, Aaron Rodgers, the defense, even though Sauce Gardner's a hold merchant. Um, I think as of right now, I'm on the Jets' money line, but my opinion may change because Josh Allen is a superhero at the quarterback position. Let me know what you think about this game. Yeah, I do kind of lean on the Jets as well, but I'm probably not going to be betting it again. Uh, Josh Allen, I'm pretty sure his his uh, availability is going to be up in the air. I know he's not 100. percent Slammed his head really hard last last week. Um, if it's up to him, he's obviously going to play. But you know, yeah. there's concussion protocols nowadays. So he came back into that game. Yeah, but this is going to be a really good game. Obviously, it's in New York, right? Yeah, that's huge. You know, these teams are going to be playing it out. New York. It's in New Jersey, actually. <laughs> that's their home, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think uh, these teams are going to be battling it out to the end of the season. I think. Huge one for the Jets to win at home. You got to win your home game between these two teams. But uh, I lean on the Jets. Not very confident just yet. Most important game of the year for both teams to date. Uh, Definitely the Jets. Jets can't drop the two and four. The Bills. You don't want to be three and three though. You, you don't, don't want to be. be obviously, them. it's not something you want, especially after starting the season three and zero. But three three losses in a row too. Yeah. If the you know, Bills lose this game. game, especially handedly, the narrative on that team is going to change big time. Huge game, but I think it means more for the Jets. They're in a tough spot, though, huh? They just had to play the Ravens in the prime time on the road. They had to go down to Houston and play one of the best teams in the league in the Texans. Now you got to go into MetLife Stadium on Monday Night Football against your rival Jets. Tough schedule, but uh, I think that's going to be a great game. We'll get some plays out for that. Make sure you tune into our live stream on Sunday where we'll dive into the games even more, give our official picks and plays, fantasy lineups, and whatnot. But another great week of football here. We're in the bye weeks now, so a little bit shorter slate. But, uh, yeah, I'm ready to roll on this one. Mac, you have the power rankings up for this latest week? Let's see if we can rattle this off for the Don't people real quick. Getting real quick, though. Give me 10 seconds. I got them right here for us. 
All right, so yeah, not too much changing. It's crazy. Oh, this is week four. Never mind. I got that, him. I got him. I got him. You got him. Yeah. Let's know. Kansas City coming in at one. Minnesota Vikings coming in at two. The Houston Texans coming in at number three. Baltimore Ravens find their way back in at number four. And the Washington Commanders make an appearance at number five. Yeah, it's nice to see the Commanders get some respect, huh? Yeah, get their love. I mean, they deserve it for sure. They've been blowing out these teams, sitting at four and one, one of the best records in the league. Have the quarterback playing with one of the best quarterbacks in the league. They deserve that spot. Not sure how long they're going to stay there. This is a huge week for them. But, um, you know, give them their flowers while you can. Yeah. Other, other yeah, teams. I, I agree. Other teams I'm, I'm thinking of putting in there. Um, The Lions, right? Lions, Lions, Lions are yeah. right there. Um, At the Cowboys? No, I think they're sitting this around. This is a big eight, game this week. Eight, for eight to 10 right now. Yeah, huge game for it this week. Um, it, There's a few teams you could definitely put in there. I know the Bills, Packers. Those have dropped two straight. Two really good teams, though. So I think the Packers are a good football team, too. I wouldn't jump the gun on the Packers just yet. Yeah, we got to see. This week's going to be telling for a lot of teams. Um, I told you the Ravens are going to get back in there. You guys are hating on them so hard at the beginning of the year. I feel like I told my brothers, I said, it feels like it's I hate on them no matter I what. Feel like, I, I told them, I said, I feel like I'm a Ravens fan now only because it's crazy to me just because of how bad you guys bash you them. You are like, a Ravens fan right now. Your Patriots are irrelevant, so you jump to the Ravens while you just while you. No, I'm a Patriots you. fan for sure. If I had to jump to a team, it'd still be Kyle Shanahan and those guys. I like your Cowboys down there too. But, um, Ah, it's just crazy to me. That's one of the top rosters in the league. If they were in the NFC, they'd be running the table. I think they're just a little brother by Patrick Mahomes and Co. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I I admit to it. I know they beat my ass every time. I'm, I know I'm a big hater of them, but they are they're definitely a top. Fun Probably. to watch. Fun yeah. to watch too. But um, yeah, let's get into some other sports here. The NHL has officially taken place. I know we had those European games last week between the Sabres and the Devils. I caught those, but they're at one o'clock on the NHL Network. Kind of hard to watch. Um, last night was the true opening night here in the States and in Canada. Um, my Boston Bruins went into South Florida for the banner raising and got pumped, but that's kind of what you expect when you don't put in your Vesna caliber goalie that we paid $66 million for, but at least they paid Jeremy Swayman. I'm so hyped about that. Um, saw him sitting on the bench, so I'm not going to take that as a true game. Uh, we get our home opener on Thursday night. I'm excited to see how these Bruins look Pretty outside. Good. Uh, we got the Canadians, so that should be a nice one with, with Sway. Yeah, mm-hmm. with Sway and that. You guys got your home opener here tonight, but a couple other games Not last home. night. Or, yeah, your your season opener tonight in Pittsburgh. Our boys are at that one right now. That'll be a good game. But the Utah Hockey Club, I don't know if you caught any of that. I watched that game. Arizona Coyotes looked good last night, and they should be because of how bad they've been recently and all those draft picks they had. Barrett Heaton, Logan Cooley, Dylan Gunther, Clayton Keller. Um, Connor Ingram is a good goalie. They brought in Sergachev for the blue line. They have Sean Dersey. I like a lot of the pieces that Utah has. Love the owner they got, too. He was on in between the Bruins periods. They were interviewing on PK and Messier where um, he wants to build up Utah, put a rink in every every town there and get into a hockey community, too. He's a big basketball guy. I talked about how the ski resort can attract players, and he wants to make his experience for the team and their families, players, fans, um, one of a kind. So I'm expecting a great stadium to go up next to the Jazz Stadium. They're still playing where the Jazz are now, kind of racing to get that banner to the Raptors. But I think they're going to have a successful season here. I think they might push for a playoff spot. You know, it gets weak in that west out towards the bottom. Um, their jerseys look really great. Hoping they get a true name for their team, even though Utah Hockey Club is kind of cool. Um, any thoughts on that one? I, they, they had a good opening night last night. I didn't watch that game, but I know they won 5-2, obviously against the dump of the league in Chicago Blackhawks. Bedard had their hat points. right now. This is the only good thing about him is their logo. <laughs> Bedard had two points. Uh, good start to his season, but uh, yeah, this team looks pretty good. They look like they look like that Vegas team looked like in the in the 2019 se- 2018 season, the inaugural season. Um, they could be a could be a a sleeper this year. I just like so so much that young talent being put together. Like Gunther with two goals, Cooley with one. That power play they have Michelli as well. Um, there's just so many good young players that are about to flourish in that system where it, hockey actually matters and they're not in a college rink. Um, another early game that took place was Seattle and St. Louis. That game was kind of crazy. It was 2-0 Seattle, and then St. Louis came back and won that one. Justin Falk with a pair of assists, filling in for Tory Krug on the blue line. Um, not too high on either of those teams, but like I said, I think that the new markets are going to get pushed by the NHL. A lot of people hating on my take on, on Instagram. Um <laughs> I think you. I think you Utah. Can, get, you, you put some bait in there, didn't you? <laughs> a little bit of bait. A little, a little bit. bit. Yeah, a little bit. They they always bite. They always bite. But I do think the Utah Hockey Club can push for a playoff spot. I I, I do too. Crazy. I def- 
I think and I think the league is. props up these new teams though. Like take that caveat. The league props up these new teams to make sure that they're successful in their their start. Kraken weren't, but yeah, definitely Vegas. I mean, the Kraken made the playoffs though. No, right? not, not their inaugural. But year two and three. Like a, yeah, year yeah. two, they definitely did, but inaugural season they were pretty shitty. Yeah, different not, team because this is more of just an expansion of a market. But like I said, they have a lot of good talent. Um. A lot of good games tonight. I'm excited to watch the Oilers and the Jets. I know I have the uh, the Rangers on the puck line and the Leafs on the puck line tonight. I think they both blow out their easy matchups. Uh, but who knows? Penguins home opener. They might get some some fireworks some, there. And puck luck. Yeah. Um, but that, that dinosaur factory is uh, on its way out. A lot of good stuff going on in the NHL here, though. Um, excited for a great year. We'll get our power rankings out to you next week. We'll dive into more of these games. We'll see a little bit more. But um, excited to see Macklin Celebrini, too, that new look Sharks team. Um, I always like watching those new guys play. And then my boy Linus Olmark signed that contract extension. It's funny how he has the same exact contract as Jeremy Swayman. Huh? <laughs> the 8.25. His is only four years. but They extended um, him four years. Yeah, right? Yeah, so that's, that's a pretty good deal. I feel like the price is going up. Any any news from you? Let's get some thoughts on the Igor Shesterkin holding out for twelve and not holding out, no. but turning down twelve and a half million. No, he turned down eleven mil. It was eight. eight it was eight times eighty eight. But um, he wants twelve and a half, which would absolutely. What do you think they're gonna pay him? Twelve and a quarter market. I I don't know. I think they're gonna offer him like eleven seven next. See if see if he'll budge on that. Twelve and a half is crazy. He's getting twelve gonna, though. He's getting twelve. I think. You're not gonna win a cup getting twelve. Getting 12, uh, 12 no, it's you a just recipe saw, for disaster. You just, you just saw how well he played in that last postseason. That was incredible, and they only got so far because, you know, that Florida Panthers roster, even with a goaltender, Mavrovsky was getting, what was he getting, 10 mil, I think? Yeah. Um, he's, he, they just, they were just too loaded for that and for this, for that, for that Rangers roster. And, you know, you're, you're not going to have any, a, a better roster if you're making $12.5 million. Or, you know, you got to load up the roster around you. You need four lines, you need to be deep. Um, I'm not happy about Igor being this greedy. You know, you, you're in New York. You saw Aaron Judge take a $50 million pay cut. You saw Dylan Brunson take a $150 million pay cut. Take a page out of their book. This, that the, Both those teams look really good right now because they're able to spread their wealth a little more. Um, NHL, you you know, the money doesn't go like that. So you, you definitely got to be a little less greedy if you want to win something. But, you know, yeah. we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Gotta, That's what I was saying. I was thinking the same thing. Don't these goalies that they want long term deals? Don't you want a good team in front well, of win? To yeah. win? Yeah. I mean, you'll, you'll but, make your but money. Dude. Igor is the best in the league. I think it is. Twelve is. The, is, is I, the no, best no, no, no. I no. I think twelve is what he's gonna get. But I just I thought paying how much screen, better is he? No, dude. How dude, much I better is paying, he? Playman. Not much, and he's not four million dollars better than him. Two thirds of his con or a third of his contract he'd be getting. Dude, I was mad that we gave eight point two five before these years started. I said most I give is like seven, seven and a half to a goalie for that long. You want to tie up your money? Listen, I know the the cap is rising and stuff, but Flamin's a top four goalie in the league. Yeah, you know? eight and a quarter he's, is really good. If he's making eight and a quarter is great, but if he's making eight and a quarter, you should not be making twelve and a half. I don't care how good you are. The Bobrovsky ten mil contract kind of screws you over. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, eleven seven, dude. Just take eleven seven, eleven five, whatever. He's taking twelve. He's taking twelve and taking it to the bank. I don't think you guys are letting him go either because you love having a great goaltender there following Lundqvist footsteps. You know, big thing coming up though. Not gonna say we're gonna get him. Not getting my hopes up or anything. But McDavid's on a contract year as well. So okay. Clear, oh, okay. Just clear all this Wayne cap space. Gretzky. <laughs> dude, you just clear all this cap space. You know, you might want to come over and play in the Big Apple. It's pretty. It's pretty uh appetizing place to look at. Yeah, that's interesting. I'm excited for these Rangers though because they 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 look poised in the preseason. They looked like the one team that was like ready to go from the preseason, yeah, big time. And uh, that's why I like them on the puck line here tonight. I think they might pump this Penguins team tonight. But uh, who knows? Like I said, home cooking, P- Pittsburgh tough place to play. Um, we'll have a lot more in the NHL. Excited for that. We'll get our daily plays out for that. I got some on the card tonight, and we got some. I like that late night hockey. I don't know about you. That West Coast hockey is my favorite to watch. But um, the NBA is also kicking off here kind of soon. Um, our Knicks and Celtics taking on each other on October 22nd. We'll get into that banter, I think, next week. you got one more week yeah, where we'll that one tips up. Next week. But um, Huff put in a note here about Bronny James. Huff, Bronny James is not relevant. What did he, he, what he, did he, he even he, say? LeBron James and Bronny James officially made their NBA debut oh, as father-son man. duo for the Lakers. LeBron continues to be LeBron, but can Bronny help this Lakers team, or is this just for TV? And if so, in what role? I think it's just for TV, Huff. You're 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 playing along with the rest of the media here. We're talking about Bronny James here, mid. 
Yeah. Now, especially now in his first year, I mean, maybe he's he gonna be a rotation piece something. on the on the second unit. He's also signed a dual con- or a, a what's that called a two way deal? Two way deal. Yeah, two way contract. Um, so you know, he might have, might not even be up for all the games, but um, I don't think he's gonna have an impact in his first season, let alone. I don't know. I think he had a prop for it was like to Bronny for jo- Bronny James to score twenty five plus points in any game, and I think it was like plus. Five fifty thousand or something like that. It's like watch. It'll be like game eighty one when they're sitting. Everybody <laughs> drops forty. Yeah, I don't know, but um, I don't think he's worth talking about just yet. No, I don't think so either. But he'd be pretty cool if he does some stuff off the bench for him. Then jumping over the MLB, much more exciting stuff happening there. The wild card took place. Mackey's New York Mets knocked out the Milwaukee Brewers in iconic fashion. Was that game three? I believe game three. Yep. Yep, game three. Backs, Backs against the wall. wall. The polar bear comes up to the plate. And and down the line, baby. Let's fucking go. He's got the Mets head on. They're playing right now, so you got to accept that. He's fighting for his life against the Phillies. That's a great matchup between two uh, NL East rivals um, taking place in New York, too, so not too far from where he's recording. But that team took out the Brewers. Then we had the Padres. They easily defeated their matchup. Who did the Padres end up playing? I think that was an easy one. They had the I, Braves, right? The Braves, yeah. Yeah, the Braves come oh. off that doubleheader. They died the day you guys beat them in the doubleheader, I think. I think you guys put the... Lindor, in them. Lindor's home run absolutely took all the air out of that team. Yeah, and I think they didn't have anything going for him, especially with Chris Sale. And also running into the Chris Padres. Chris Sale getting banged up at the wrong time didn't help either. Also running into the Padres, probably, the I think, right now, the hottest team in the league behind the Mets, or right next to Mets, um, those both those teams are rolling right now. They're going to be really hard to beat. I know the Mets are in a banner right now, down one nothing. Had the Phillies on the brink, but they can figure out a way out of this out of this series. I think the Padres Mets series can spread them. Yeah, I think both the Dodgers and Phillies will be tough outs here tonight. Um, but I think whoever wins that Padres Dodgers series will go on to win the World Series. But going back to the AL here in the wild card round, the Tigers finally took out those Houston Astros who have been getting to the ALCS or the World Series. Seems like almost every year. So a lot of people happy in that sense. The Tigers seem like a team of destiny. They had less than 1% chance to make the playoffs or less than 3%, something like that. Something very low. And um, they ended up getting in there. They had this AL Cy Young with Tariq Skubal. Now they're winning games. They won again today against the Guardians. Um, this team, man, those we're talking about hot teams in the playoffs. They might be able to get it done. And we kind of said all year long, whoever gets the Guardians, that's an easy out in the first round when you see them. So maybe that will ring true if the Tigers can upset them. We just didn't think it would be them doing it. And then you have the Kansas City Royals. We kind of dubbed as one of the best wildcard teams on both sides early, early on in the year. They're doing their thing. Cole Ragan seems to win every time he pitches. And um, Seth Lugo is a great number two. Bobby Witt Jr., one of the most electrifying players in baseball, probably the third best player in baseball behind Otani and Judge. Um, He's playing great too. And they actually built up that lineup. Reminds me of the year they won the World Series where they're pretty deep with some good pitching as well. But they take on the Yankees here. 1-1 series playing tonight. Yankees choke artist Huff's got him win to win the World Series, but Aaron Judge and his strikeout woes, playoff woes continue. Garrett Cole being haunted by the playoffs once again, even though they escaped with a win game one when he pitched. Um, I think all these favorites are sitting ducks right now, and it just depends how many can get through. Yeah, they're kind of all on the brink right now. You got the the Guardians on the brink, you got the Phillies and Dodgers, all one and two seeds. Um, and the Yankees drop one tonight, I mean, all one and two seeds, uh, on the brink of elimination at that point. But, um, you know, that's that's the MLB playoffs. It's how it goes every single year. Teams get hot. It's a hot hand. doesn't matter how the 162 games went. As long as you get to those playoffs, um, it's whoever's rolling at that point. So you, you see this year in, you know. All the teams uh, that could clinch, too, are all at home now, too, which is crazy. Fernando Tatis, he's, yeah. he's been on a tear, huh? I think he has one of the highest. Uh, 1.9 OPS going into game, game four. I think it's his highest all time, right? It said a minimum 20 at bats, highest all time in, in playoffs. Yeah, that's crazy. I mean, they, he has lineup protection too. That lineup's so deep. I could write off names for you right now. No need to. Yeah, I will. Profar, Machado, Cronenworth, <laughs> um, Bogarts, uh, Merrill, and then obviously they have Tatis as well. So they have the pitching staff. Dylan Cease is going tonight. That's going to be a tough out. Huge. Dodgers. The Dodgers really got banged up with their pitching staff towards the end of the campaign. So it ended up being Walker Bueller, who was terrible since he came back from injury. He had the pitch last night and got shelled. And now they have Landon Knack, who's actually pitched great. The Mets just score? No, Vientos. Great walk. Great walk. First and uh, second, nobody right. out. Yeah, you got to live for it. That's a good spot to it be. Was down, it was down one. It was one, two count. He's fucking work count. Now it got on base. Got a uh, demo coming up right now. It's one nothing, bottom five. Zero, nobody out. First and second. So 
Um, need something here. Yeah, like Let's we said, going. we'll get the recap of the uh, postseason here going. We have a lot of plays out. We have three out tonight. But we'll let Mackey get back to this game and continue watching the end of it. Hopefully it ends in victory fashion for him to knock out his rival Phillies. But uh, that's going to do it for us here this week. Make sure you tune in the socials for all of our plays. we got daily plays for the NHL. we got the MLB postseason plays. Assume we'll have the NBA uh, daily plays in a couple weeks here. The NCAA card's been rocking. Mackey and Huff holding that down. Nothing too crazy, Mac. Any quick shout-outs for the NCAA for football that you want to give? Cam Ward, another electrifying win. Um, Bama going down. First, uh, yeah. Vandy's first win over a number one seed ever. I mean, that's something you're never going to see ever again, especially after they're coming off a win against Georgia. That was absolutely massive. But uh, other than that, Texas looked a little more uh, down to earth. They, like, they, like they came down to earth last mm-hmm. week. Um, Ohio State, honestly, in my opinion, picked the best team in the country. What about yeah, Ashton Genty? Any thought on him? Could he push for that? For that? I, I I think it's incredible that he's not the favorite right now, but it's just no, West. No, the number. Yeah, that's the problem. It's the competition he's playing against. The numbers he's putting up are like, sorry, um, the numbers he's putting up are like nothing anybody's ever seen before. Last three Heisman don't even compare. I think he yeah, like, so that's Ingram, Ingram and Henry. I'm more Ingram, Henry, and Reggie Bush. Yeah, the last three, and they just like it doesn't even come close. Obviously. Power five count is different Mountain West. You get to play Utah State every other week, so yeah. it's pretty nice. But I mean, this guy is absolutely cool. And um, if he if he continues putting up these numbers, I mean, dude, he was minus one fifty five to score three touchdowns, and he hit. He yeah. hit it. It's just like the the the, the stats are just nothing I've ever seen before. But it's it's pretty cool to watch. Yeah, for sure. A lot of good stuff coming out of there. We'll keep our eyes on that as well. And we'll get our NFL plays out. I know you guys are really hyped for those. Tune into the live stream. Those have been popping. A lot of great questions. A lot of great people. Uh, over a thousand listeners there last week. But we got a lot going on. Hope you guys are following along for the ride. Exciting week of sports ahead. Thanks for tuning in. Catch you next week.